uh, got a good word for us today. Got a good word for us today. Uh, the dreamer. We're going to talk about the dreamer brief. I'm not going to be long at all. Uh, at all. Uh, but I would encourage the heart of God's people. Uh, encourage your heart. We're going into, we're getting to, down to the end of this year. And, you know, yesterday I talked about momentum. God has given us momentum to carry us over. And we must maximize our moment. The things that we have, the things that God has given us, we must maximize it. We must, the Bible says, concerning the works of my hands, O Lord, command ye me. It's time to move and it's time to uh, become activated. God bless you, Prophet Sanders. God bless you, sir. God bless you indeed. Uh, God bless you, sir. I, I tell you that you're heading on a head-on collision with God. There's a greater there's a greater anointing. There's a greater power. There's a greater authority that you're walking into, sir. There are some things that some things that there are some things are taught, and there are some things that are caught. When you meet God at a certain place, when you meet God in obedience, God is going to carry you. God bless you, Frederick. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Be encouraged. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get started because, like I said, I'm not going to be that long. But I want to talk about a dreamer. A dreamer. You know, all of you, you have dreams. You have dreams. A dreamer is someone who dreams. Someone who, while they're subconscious, while they're asleep, God puts something in their spirit wherein they're able to, it becomes activated when they become conscious. A, a dream, a dream. Many of you have dreams. Many of you have dreams and certain desires uh, that you want to, to do before God that you want to do. But it's amazing that when you have a dream, you're always going to have enemies and you're going to have dream three thieves. That's why, that's why you fight. You're fighting. The adversary is fighting you the way that he's fighting you because you have a dream. God has put a vision in your heart. God has given you a promise. And because you have a promise, there has came up a promise thief. There has come up a terror to smother, to destroy just like the man who planted good seeds in the field, but he went to sleep. But when he went to sleep, the Bible said that when the enemy came in, he planted tares. And those tares look just like wheat. And the purpose of those tares is to smother, is to destroy the good things that God has planted in your life. That's why you fight. That's why there's a fight against your mind. That's why there's a fight against your heart. That's why there's a fight. See, the adversary after your fight, the reason he's after your fight, because he's after your heart. Because your heart, that's where your dream is at. That's where you dream your dream. That's where your relationship is at. It's in your heart. That's why David hid the heart, hid his heart in God, hid God's word in his heart that he might not sin against God. And so the devil, the adversary is after your dream. And the adversary also have dream thieves. People who are on assignment to become your friend. People who are on assignment uh, to befriend you just to get close to you, to know your thoughts to know your will, to know your desires, to know the blueprint of your dream. And see, the adversary, he's after the blueprint. He wants the blueprint because the Bible says he's an imitator. He's an imitator. The Bible says he comes as an angel of light. But inwardly, he's a divine wolf. He wants to imitate you. He wants to emulate you. See, the thing about it with the wheat and the tear, see, the tear looked just like the wheat. It looked just like it. And you could not tell the difference between the tear and the wheat until harvest time. And see, many of you, this is your harvest time. That's why things are be tur turning upside down. That's why things that seem calm are showing up. That's why people who you thought at one time had your back. Yeah, they had your back with a knife, with a machete. But now their head is being stirred up. Their head, is, they're showing their head. They are showing their true colors. That's what it is because it's harvest time. And in harvest time, there's a separation. And in that separation, God is separating the wheat from the tear. See, God is carrying you into a new place. God is separating you and taking you into a new place. But also he's taking those, those dream things. He's taking those things that have been camouflaged in your life to help you to be become exposed. And now they are being gathered up too, to be burned away. And see, there's a burning away in your life. There's a burning away. That's why there's a pain. That's why pain is happening to you in your life because there's a burning away. There are things, there are things, there are things that the adversary has tried to bury, has tried to put while you wouldn't sleep, while you wouldn't pay attention. He tried to put in your heart. He tried to put around you. He tried to put in your house. 
He tried to put in your family. He tried to put in your relationship. He tried to put in your spouse. He tried to put in your skin, in, in your in, in your um, uh, in your spouse. He tried to put around your kids. And the reason why he put those things there, wherein he was planting seeds. He was planting seeds because he had a plan. He had an attack. And his attack was at one time to destroy you. His attack, his attack was to wiretap your mind. His attack was to wiretap your ways to know what you think, how you feel. So that's why it's that's why it's so important to be careful what comes out your mouth. That's why the Bible said it's not what defiles a man that goes into a man, but what comes out your mouth. See, the adversary, he know, he know what he planted. And so all he's trying to do is to wait on how you respond. See, because he can't, the devil can't teach you and tell you what to think, but he can put thoughts in your mind. And so once he put those thoughts in your mind and those are seeds, those are subliminal thoughts. See, because the Bible, the Bible says that the adversary, he's an accuser. He's the accuser of the brother. And see, he will put stuff out there all day. He will put stuff in your mind. That's why, that's why in your family, if you notice that sometime in your family, your marriage, you have hard times, you have disagreements. And see, at those disagreements, in those places where you have a disagreement, that's when you become silent. Because you're angry, you become silent. And you don't want to say the wrong thing, so you're becoming silent. And so while you're becoming silent, that's when he plants seeds in your mind. He plants seeds of doubt. He plants seeds of division. That's what he do in your silent place. That's where he's at, in your silent place. But speak to that devil in your silent place. And the Bible says to resist the devil and he will flee. And see, God has given you the authority and the power over the devil. He's given you the power over subliminal thoughts, even over your emotions. You must realize that you have authority and power over your emotions. It's called God. It's called faith. It's called the word of God. For the Bible says that greater is he that, 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 than he that's in the world. There is a greater in you. That means that you can resist the devil and he will flee. And see, even in this particular season, see, seeds of your past is coming up. That harvest is coming up. Those voices in your past are coming up. And the reason for those voices in the past to come up, that's to speak to you and to get you to not move forward. See, God is calling you cross your promise into your promised land. See, but the voices of your past are trying to hold you, hold you up and it's trying to hold you back. And what are those voices? Those voices of your past is hurt. You've been hurt. You've been hurt. You've been hurt. And you haven't been able to deal with that hurt. That's why you become, you're in a place and you're in an arena of frustration. And see, frustration is the manifestation of pinned up anger. Anger, things that you've held in. Things that you didn't want to let go of. But it's time to let that stuff go. Because that stuff is holding you away from your promised land. It is. It is. And I'm getting ready to close, but I'm reminded of a Bible of a dreamer. And his name was Joseph. And see, Joseph was a dreamer. He had a dream. He did have a dream. But the thing about it, he was, he was uh, Joseph. He was Jacob's favorite son. His brethren hate him. His brethren hate him because he was chosen. See, many of you, because God has chose you and God has called you out, many people hate you. Even your family members, people that you've been close to, you, your, your childhood friends, people that, that, that you've been raised up together with in life. They become jealous of you. See the thing about it. See with with with, uh, with Jacob's brothers. See when he had a see when he had a dream when he was the father's favorite. They hated him. But also did he with a little father. Then he dreamed a dream, but he told his dream. And in him to telling his dream, his brothers hated him the more. See the thing about it. If you notice, because you open up your mouth, because you said what God can do, because you gave the testimony what God can do and how God can bring you out. Because you told the world, because you told your friends that God was great in your life, that God was blessing you, that you're not doing the things that you once did. Because you open up your mouth, that's why you're under attack. You are under attack because you open up your mouth, because you declared God. See, the thing about it, you realize some of you, see, some of you, you're afraid to open up your mouth because every time you open up your mouth of what God is doing or what God has done, you come up under attack. And see, because of, see, the devil wants to put fear in your heart. That's what he wants to do. See, some of you, the reason why, the reason why your dreams are not coming to pass is because of fear. Because you're afraid. Because you're afraid because every time you open up your mouth, you get under attack. Troubles come in your life. The adversary will touch your family. The adversary will touch your money. The adversary will touch things. You touch your emotions. And you find yourself in a warfare because you open up your mouth.
But I come to tell you to open up your mouth because there's authority in your mouth. Did you not know that? The Bible says after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he's given you all power over all the power of the enemy. He's given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. In other words, things that try to bite you, things that try to sting you. You have authority over it. You have power over it. But also the Bible says that you have authority to heal the sick and to open up prison doors and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You have the authority. The power means you have the ability. God has given you the ability to overcome. God has given you the ability to become free. You are. God has given you the ability to become free. You might feel bound, but you have the ability to become free because bound bondage is a choice. It's a choice because God has given you a choice to become free. He has. Paul said it. Pa Paul said, I know how to abase and I know how to abound. And see, Paul knew how to do both things because he had the power in him. And see, that same power that rested in Paul, it rests in you. It rests in you. And so the condition and where you feel it and where you are right now, you don't have to be that way. You have to be in that condition. Some of you, you're sad. Some of you are down. You're hurt. Your heart is broken. You don't have to be that way. You don't have to live in that state of mind no more. <coughs> Do you hear me? Some of you, you're facing, confu you're facing confusion. Your mind is confused because you don't know your direction. You know your direction. Your direction is God. All you got to do is seek God, seek God, seek his face. The Bible says in all your ways, acknowledge him and, and acknowledge him with your whole heart and he will direct your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's your blueprint. Because if you, when you do it yourself, there's destruction. The Bible says that there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but it, that way is destruction. See, the thing about that you must understand, even with Joseph, even with, even with Jacob, Jacob, Joseph, when Joseph had a dream, two things happened. There was jealousy among his brothers, but his father observed his dreams. See, when people who are really not an imposter, who are really your friends, they will pay attention to what God has given you. They will listen. When you pay attention, when you observe, that means you'll listen. People will respect you. When people love you, when they truly love you, when people truly have your back, they will get behind you. They will support you. That's someone that will support your dream. Now, a dream thief, someone who will try to destroy you. Someone who will try to be, make you become silent. And so that's why people around you in your life are trying to make you become silent. That's what the devil, the adversary will do. He will try to make you become a silent. But also go to the father. This is another thing that what Joseph brothers did. Also, they plotted against him. They became quiet and they plotted to kill him and they put him, him in a ditch and left him to die. See, some of you, some of you life, the adversary has put you in a pit. You're in a pit of pain. You're in a pit of discouragement because you had a dream, because you opened up your mouth, because you said what God can do, because you said what God said to you, what the promise that God put in your heart, because you spoke those promises out. The, the adversary has laid a plot, a set of plot up against you. And now you find yourself in a pit. You're in a pit of despair. You're in a pit of discouragement. You're in a pit of pain. But I come to tell you that just like with Joseph, just like with Joseph, he was in a pit, but he was destined. That pit experiences was destined to get him into the palace. See, because what happened with Joseph? See, they sold him. They sold him. They sold him as a slave to some Egyptians. And he ended up in Egypt. But to make a long story short, even though he was in a pit, he was sold as a slave. He ended up in the pit house and in the pit house to make a long story short. He became the, the king's number one man in charge. He became the, the voice for the king. See, the thing about it, the thing, the place where you are right now, because you had a dream. But now you're in a pit and it seems like that dream is not going to happen. It seems like it's not. It seems like it's over. It seems like it seems like it's done. It seems like it seems like your dream is not going to come true. The promises that God made you. It seems like God has lied to you. It seems like, oh, you heard God wrong. It seems like it's not going to come to pass. But I come to tell you the place where you are right now. Get yourself back up. Shake yourself because you've been destined. You've been you've been destined. You've been you've been that God has set you up because the place where you are, you at that pit. But that pit experience has set you up to get into the palace. See, God has destined you to get to the palace. Just like this young man named Mephibosheth. He was the son of Jonathan, who was the grandson of, he was the grandson of Saul. And see, it was a time of war.
And in this time of war, see, it was a time of war, the nerf that was caring for Mephibosheth. He was a boy. He was three years old. She picked him up. She picked him up and ran. She picked him up and ran. And she was doing a good thing by her picking him up. But when she ran, she dropped him, which is unfortunate. And unfortunately so, he was lame in both of his feet. See, men of you, you've been dropped. You've been dropped. People have done stuff to you. They didn't mean to. It, it, it was a good, they, they had good intentions. But, <clears throat> but some kind of way, they drop you. They drop you in pain. Some of your parents drop you. Some of your neighbors drop you. Some of you, some of you, are, you were dropped in relationships. Some of you were dropped. You were dropped even in the church. The bishop drop you. The, the first lady drop you. The mother drop you. The church drop you. And some, and some of you, you're laying on the side of the road. You're hurt. You're like the beggar. You're like the man laying on the side of the road. And see the Jew, and see the Jew, the priest and the Pharisees saw you. And because they thought you was half dead, they kept on walking. But then the good Samaritan came by. They saw, he saw you was, he saw you was broken. He saw you was be abused. He saw you was hurt. But he looked at you and he saw that you was half alive. And what he did, he poured in the oil and the wine. In other words, he encouraged you. He restored you. And see, I come to tell you, when God is looking at you and see your friends, your enemies, they look at you as half, half dead. And see, that's why nobody want to mess with you. See, that's why nobody want to have time with you. See, but, but I come to tell you, but God is looking at you and God see that you're half alive. And in your place where you're half alive, the Bible's to strengthen those things that remain that are ready to die. And God is saying, arise, arise out of that place, arise out of that pain. Arise out of that pit because you have a destiny. You have destiny with the palace. God wants you to arise. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. God wants you to arise and come out of the place that you're in. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? A dream, a dream, dream. Pick your dream back up. It's time to dream again. It's time to dream again. You know what God has put in your heart. If your dreaming is writing, it's time to write again. If your dreaming is smiling, it's time to smile again. It's time to, it's time to, it's time to. And what you need to do, and what you need to do, go in your mind, go in your mind, and those places that discourage, discourage you, those thoughts, cast those thoughts away. Separate yourself from those thoughts that will try to come against your dream. And those friends, those people that have been called or served as your friends, but really they are imposters. Those people, separate yourself from anybody and anyone that will not support your dream. It's time to pick your sword back up. It's time to pick your promise back up. It's time to dream again because God wants you to dream. God wants to call your dream to become fulfilled because the Bible says in Job, God speak to a man once, but man don't perceive it. He speak to him twice. Man didn't get it. So what did God do? God put him in a dream to seal his purpose. And see, God wants to seal his purpose. As I'm speaking to you, God wants to seal his purpose. God wants to seal that dream that he gave you. And see, you've been asleep. You've been asleep with discouragement. You've been asleep because you've been looking at things. You've been looking at uh, your friends. You've been looking at your enemies. You've been looking at life. You've been looking at your eyes. You've been looking at what you see. You've been looking at what you hear and you said to yourself, you've said to yourself, it's not going to happen. You've been looking at your giants. You've been looking at your obstacles. You said it's not going to take place. This dream wasn't of God. This dream is not going to come to pass. But I come to tell you it's real. It's real. I come to tell you dream again. Lay down and dream again. Lay down and dream again because this time God is going to seal his purpose to you. God is going to seal you with joy. God is going to seal your dream with promise. So in closes, I come to tell you to dream again, dream again, dream again, dream again, because God wants you to arise. God wants to fulfill your promise, that promise that he made in you. Don't, don't doubt God. Don't, don't, dis, don't disobey God because God is saying to dream again. Pick your sword back up. Pick your dream back up again. Pick your pencil. Pick your pen back up again. Prophesy again. If God has called you to prophesy, preach. If God has called you to preach, preach again. That's your dream. If God has called you to be get, get back in prayer, pray again. If God has called you to worship again, worship again. See, because that's where your relationship is at when you worship God. That's where your relationship and your authority was at when you prayed to God. When you got down on your knees, that's where your authority was at. You wonder why you lost your authority. You wonder why you lost something. You lost it. You lost it on your knees. And so God wants you to get it back. God wants you to lay down again and dream again.
Dream again. I know it seemed like that dream didn't come to pass. I know it seemed like that dream is not going to happen. See, but that was just an optical illusion. That was just something that the devil was putting in your ears. And so I come to tell you to lay down and dream again. Because this time, that dream is going to come to pass. This time, God is going to seal his purpose. His purpose in your life. His purpose to arise with joy. His purpose that your family come together. His purpose is that your connection, that you re reap the harvest of what God has for you. God wants to fulfill his purpose in you. He wants you to lay down and dream again. Dream again and find joy. Dream again and get your peace back. Dream again and, 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 and find him. Find him. Find his revelation. Find his revelatory power. Find his wisdom. You said that you asked God for wisdom. And it feels like you hadn't gotten wisdom. It feels like when you pray for wisdom, trouble came. When you pray for wisdom, everything has got out of order in your life. But I come to tell you, lay down and dream again. And this time when you wake up, this time when you open up your eyes, wisdom is going to come. See, because your pain is birthed in your wisdom. Your troubles is birthed in your wisdom. And so in closing, I say, and I say again, dream again. Do you hear me? God bless you. Please share. Please share. God bless you. And may, may have heaven smile on you. Dream again. Don't let nothing steal your joy. Don't let nothing steal your dream. God gave you a dream for a reason. And God wants you to lay down again and dream again. And this time, he's going to seal his promise. This time, he's going to seal his purpose in your heart. Is that all right? Hope you all have a good day. Hope you all have a good morning. Amen. Keep us in your prayers and keep my wife and Emily in your prayers. I hadn't been talking about it, but they have been under the weather a little bit. And but keep them in your prayer. But I think they're in the tail end. They're at the tail end of what they're dealing with. They're at the tail end of that cold that they have. And so I just thank God. I thank God for time. And I thank God for his healing. I thank God for healing them. And I appreciate your support. And do me a favor, please share. If this word has really helped you, uh, please share. Dream again. Dream again. God has given you a dream. Don't let that dream die. Don't let it dry. The Bible says to strengthen those things that remain that are dead, ready to die. Pick, those, pick it back up. Pick it back up. Pick your dreams back up. Pick your blessings back up. Pick your sword back up. Dream again. Do you hear me? God bless you. And have a smile on you. And may all God's best be yours.